Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Brian Williamson, the CEO of Jericho Energy Ventures, Inc. How are you doing today, Brian? Doing great, Rich. Thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure. Excited to have you on the show. And why don't we get started and you can tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with Jericho Energy Ventures, Inc. Sure, would love to. So my background is kind of interesting. I have a legal background, accounting background, finance background, and found myself as a consultant for Anderson gravitating towards the energy world. Um, you know, didn't have a directional point when I started my career. So energy seemed interesting, stuck with energy and how we are 20 plus years later, and I'm still doing energy. Um, did it privately for most of those 20 years. The transition for me in coming to Jericho was going from a private world into the public world. And, you know, to do it, I couldn't have asked for a better partner in Alan Wilson. So Alan is a 25 year veteran of the public markets. And so when Alan and I were working together on a mining company, he had, he had approached me about doing something in the energy space on the public side. And he gave me all the, all, all the, all the good things with it. And sort of having been in private oil and gas energy and looking at all the things that were going on and the excitement in the public market, I thought, what a great time to do it because you know, in 2014, when we got started together in Jericho, the tide was rolling out in oil and gas, right? We started the year, but the year fell apart in prices less. And our thinking was there, you know, let's build this company the right way with high quality assets, with solid shareholder base. Um, and the tide will come in eventually for energy again. And so that was sort of our start. And that was sort of the, the foundation of Jericho in 2014. Fantastic. And we see oil prices today at uh, the highest in three years. So we've definitely are. seen a turnaround. So, and which was expected. We Negative oil wasn't going to last forever. And <laughs> that was a great buying opportunity. We were calling the buy like left, right, and center when it was negative oil. It's like, this is, it's going to, when are you ever going to see oil negative again? So probably never. And that was a very interesting time in history, really, for oil. Can you tell us a little bit about your main goals for Jericho Energy Ventures for the last six months of 2021? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we agree with everything you said about oil, um, but as a company, we made a transition. So in 2021, we transitioned from being just an oil and gas publicly listed company to a broader based energy company, really focusing on the energy transition. Um, we see the opportunity that is in front of us, you know, and that was a big moment and a big shift for us, right? So with the shareholders we have, you know, backing this transition with a capital raise in the middle of 2020, we went about looking about how to transition Jericho as we rolled into 2021. And the transition involved bringing us into the hydrogen world. We see hydrogen as a really critical element of what's to come in this energy transition to a broader, cleaner energy spectrum. And so as we roll through 2021, the expectation for us is to continue down that path, to continue to adding high quality hydrogen technologies to our portfolio. Because what we see in hydrogen is that there is a lot of things that were started there in the first revolution, right? So Governor Schwarzenegger kind of kicked off hydrogen when he pushed it um, as part of his gubernatorial campaign in California. And an industry was born of amazing science and amazing technology, but it fell apart just like everything else with the financial crisis. The only difference being hydrogen never saw the light of day again. It wasn't a part of Obama's you know, uh, energy transition. He was really focused on solar and wind. Um, so hydrogen kind of got left behind. And so what we've seen is because it is such a complicated material science that it's taken that long for some of these technologies to see the light of day. And we think that Jericho is just the vehicle to bring them to the market. And we see ourselves as the place where we can help you, the scientist, the inventor who has commercial ready game-changing technology, 
transition to the commercial world. And that's exactly what we did and what we're doing with HTI, which was our acquisition in Q1 of this year. So as we roll through the second half of 2021, we have two objectives. One is to be a big part of the hydrogen production value chain. So we've been very focused on investment opportunities in that space. Um, and number two is really delivering to the world the, the hydrogen technology zero emission steam boiler system. And I think for us, it's showing the world just the size, the sheer size of that market, right? So everybody focuses on mobility, cars, planes, trains. We see it every day. It's out in the street. It's on, you know, it's in the air, it's on the water, but people have not seen the scale and the breadth and depth of the emissions of the commercial industrial steam market. Right? It represents almost a third of our fossil fuel pollution, our greenhouse gas emissions. But because we don't see it in, in, in the city or in, you know, in the urban centers, it's off in the hills, it's over the mountains in the inland areas where you just don't see these factories, it's a problem, right? And so our agenda is to take our boiler, to take HTI's patented game-changing technology and show the industrial and commercial steam market what they can do at the same price with zero emissions. That's great. Now, it's important when you're building a business to have a strong management team and directors, especially right now when you're building a small cap company. So can you talk a little bit about your management team and some of the previous success in the clean energy sector and the public markets? Yeah, so I think I break our team down into three groups and three things. So, you know, what makes what we do novel for the folks that we try and bring onto the platform and we invest in? So it's the core corporate structure, the stability and access that's important, right? So between myself, um, Ben Holman, who's our CFO, Ryan Breen, who runs corporate development, and Adam and Tony, our IR guys, we have great access and the ability to bring those technologies with C-level support to the marketplace. Um, what is the second piece of our value proposition is the technology team that we have assembled. So... Now, most of the things that you're going to see from us have amazing inventors. Um, and then we complement them with technology folks, engineering folks, material science folks who can then help them cross that last mile, bring the technology across the commercial side, because it's a big deal going from one deployment to 20 to 50 to 100, right? And so for us in doing that and partnering with the Capella Group, um, and their access to these tremendous labs and depths of talent at Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Cal Poly, where we can go for the right expertise that we need in any tech that we look to invest in or we put on our platform. Um, and, and the third piece I think that makes us unique is who supports us and the shareholder base that we have put together since the beginning and who have supported the energy transition, right? So our shareholder base is led by Ed Breen, who's the CEO of DuPont, chairman of DuPont. You know, his sage advice and wisdom and having been a Jericho shareholder since day one um, really has been guiding for us. You know, you take Ed's and you complement him with the Bellsberg family, right? Now run by Strauss Zelnick, the chairman of CBS and head of Take-Two Media. Um, they bring us such wealth of information and knowledge on how to take these micro caps, these novel technologies, and make them multi-billion dollar opportunities. Um, and then, you, you know, so the thing that you'll see with that those shareholders and our others is they're, they're amazingly successful people all, from all different walks of life that bring just a tremendous amount of support to the company, both financially, obviously, and also from a guidance perspective. Very good. Now, Brian, we know that clean energy space is a major focus for the world and Jericho Energy Ventures has made some very interesting investments in different subsidiaries. You mentioned a little bit about it. Um, can you bring in, uh, can you go through these subsidiaries and how much each one will impact the balance sheet as they grow and capture market share? So the first acquisition we made was HTI. Right, so that is our clean the steam boiler. Um, and I said this a little bit earlier, this is a $30 billion market. The addressable market is enormous. And I don't think anyone realizes how much steam is used. And what's more interesting to me is that not only is that a steam market, it's that 35% of those are coal-based emissions. So there's actually coal 
based solutions still deployed today in the industrial commercial space, right? And so for us, you know, HTI's ability to change that with a solution that's cost effective, you know, its impact on our balance sheet is pretty negligible. So we bought it for stock, um, you know, and the reality is, is that we expect HTI to be revenue positive in 2022. So less than a year after acquisition, we expect it to be revenue positive. And, and just to give you, take it a step further, right? So we're a 200-ish million dollar market cap company, right? The folks that are ahead of us in our industry, and this is how much the industry has grown and how much opportunity is there, they traded two to four to $20 billion. Wow. They do $10 million to $15 million a quarter in sales. So they do not very much in sales, but they traded 20 times the market cap of Jericho. So in terms of how we expect the space to impact our balance sheet, we expect it to be enormous opportunity for us to grow, right? We trade a $200 million market cap. $10 million a quarter is 10 boilers. That is nothing. That is nothing. So from my perspective, the opportunity that people should think about is, I want to be a part of that parabolic change that's happening, right? So everybody who invests in companies like us and us now they're alpha generated, right? We find them through guys just like you, people who do their own hard work and their homework, right? When you reach a certain level, you get all the funds, you get all the ETFs, you get everybody who wants to do beta clean energy. So in our world, this is the time, this is the difference, right? So the impact is enormous. You know, we acquired HTI, we were a $45 million market cap company. The potential and the opportunity and the patented technology we bought have now made us a $200 million market cap company. And we think this is just the beginning. Like we think we're in the first inning of this space. That's great. I love to hear that. And I know our investors in our community will love to hear that too, because we pride ourselves in getting into undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies first. That's why we love to do these interviews to introduce you to our investment community. Now, in saying that, if Jericho Energy Ventures, Inc. were to compare itself to its competitors in this sector, and you touched on it a little bit, what would set you guys apart? So what's key here is hydrogen has to be used and applied, right? And so if you think about the applications for hydrogen, we have one of the only patented zero emission applications out there. Right? So we have a 100% green solution that is patented. It's the only one on the market right now. Right? So the value proposition for us and the opportunity set for folks who are looking at us right, is, is to be involved and get up to be a part of Jericho earlier because things change quickly. Right? But the reality is hydrogen is only growing and we're early in its participation and we're early in with hydrogen. So to us, you know, all of our competitors have huge opportunity for growth, but small companies just like ours that have game-changing technologies. Remember, this is patented. With the guidance of Fortune 500 CEOs, we think that this is an amazing marketplace, amazing opportunity, right? To go from a $200 million market cap to a two to five to $10 billion. I mean, it's not, it's not unheard of. And it's all about the beta money, right? So the people who are, doing alpha-based investing, who listen to you and others and talk to you and people like that, those guys are making good, thoughtful decisions, right? But the bigger pool of money comes from all the ETFs, right? ESG-based ETFs, clean energy ETFs, have swelled a thousand percent, right? There's $700 billion in them now. And that goes to all the companies that are big. It doesn't go to the little guys like us. So every dollar, every person that invests in a company like Jericho or Jericho, they've made good, thoughtful decisions because they've had to find these unique opportunities just like us at this stage. It's important with our community to understand the share structure. Can you go through the share structure? I believe you got about 220 million shares issued and outstanding. Maybe a little bit about how much is held by management and insiders and how you plan to attract institutional and retail investment. Yeah, so we are about 220 million shares outstanding. Really simple structure, just common stock, nothing else outstanding. Um, so we think about our share structure in, in this sense. So the, the handful of families I mentioned earlier, management insiders have about 75% of the stock. Wow. So in essence, I could tell you where 75% of those shares exist. 
And, it's, you know, whether it's the Breen family, the Bellsberg family, the Hegna family, the Graves family, um, the McKenna's, you know, all self-made, you know, amazing guys and, and families that have supported us since the beginning. Um, you know, between them, management, the board, there's about 75% of the shares. Um, so it's tightly held, you know, and in terms of support, they've been amazingly supportive. These are the same folks who I said when the tide was rolling out. And you, you said this earlier, Rich, oil went negative. Yeah. It went negative in the second quarter of 2020. Crazy. These are the same folks when we went to them and said, look, we need to be broader based. We need to think about this energy transition that's coming. We love our assets. You know, we're surrounded by lots of bankruptcies and we've done an amazing job of managing our oil assets through those bankruptcies and through that downturn in zero oil. But when we said we need to do more, we need to be differentiate ourselves and focus on this transition, they all stepped up and wrote a check and financed us, right? So think about Q2, pandemic, right? Oil's negative. And here we are, our investors stepping up and, and backing Jericho um, to keep us growing and supporting this transition. So, you know, can't say enough good things about them and the support and from them, the board and our team. Fantastic. Now, it's extremely important for us here at Rich TV Live to understand why an investor would want to buy this stock. So if there was one thing you would want shareholders to know that are watching this interview today about Jericho Energy Ventures, what would it be? The best is yet to come, right? We're a $200 million Canadian market cap company, and we're just getting started. We have, you know, 40 megawatts of demand for our, our boilers right now that we are working on bringing across the finish line to sales, Right that would eclipse any number we had targeted in terms of deployments in 2022. So for us, you know, this is the most exciting time we've ever seen. You have the U.S., you have Canada, you have the U.S., you have the EU. Everybody focused on bringing hydrogen to the forefront of the energy transition. I mean, look at, you know, Canada's $50 next year, $50 per ton of carbon emission. It's a $50 tax going to 130, right? We have states in the United States that are outlawing the use of fossil fuels in 2025 and 2027. So not only do you have this shift, but you have the, the regulatory environment pivoting to say, and listen, this may be painful, but this is the way we're going because emissions aren't free. We just choose to pay for them or not pay for them when they're emitted. What is the best way for shareholders to get in contact with the company? There will be shareholders from all over the world that will see this interview. Is there an email or a phone number? What is the best way for them to reach you? So our website is, it has all the contact information, which is www.jericoenergyventures.com. Um, and then our IR and, and, and business development guys, Adam at jericoenergyventures.com. Tony at JerichoEnergyVentures.com or myself, the CEO, Brian at JerichoEnergyVentures.com. We are all available 24-7 to answer anybody's questions that they have or more information. Well, thank you for joining us today and very excited to learn more about Jericho Energy Ventures. We'll be definitely putting it on our watch list, putting it on our radar and talking with our members in our community about it. Thank you so much for your time today. Brian Williamson, the CEO of Jericho Energy Ventures. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate you having us. Always a pleasure. And for those of you guys that are watching, remember Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I do believe that this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Put it on your watch list, put it on your radar. If you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe for future up updates. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. This is Rich from Rich to be Live saying farewell.